So the first step to replacing your steering wheel, fixing any of the parts inside the column, or just doing an upgrade, which is what I'm doing, going from this model to this model, formula steering wheel, you got to get the thing off first, right? So I did this years ago, so we're just going to go over the first couple steps off of the car. But basically, you need to get behind the steering wheel, and there are three Phillips screws if you have this kind of steering wheel. So those Phillips screws will allow you to take this horn pad off. And then inside of here, you're going to have a nut that holds the steering wheel onto the shaft. You take the nut off and use your steering wheel puller, and this will come right out. And I'll just show you the back side here so you can see where to access those Phillips screws. Now if you were just replacing or upgrading your steering wheel, that's probably as far as you'll need to go, is just getting the wheel off to put the new one on. However, I have an issue inside of my column that I need to address. So there's going to be a cover plate and then a locking plate, which I'll show you here in a minute. But underneath of that is what's called a turn signal cancel cam. It's either going to be like a white or yellowish over time plastic material or kind of this green color. And this is what happened to mine. So this sticks up out of the steering column where your locking plate is and I broke mine off. Essentially this is down inside of there connected to a piece and this is the wire for your horn. It goes in there and it's got this with the these little nipples on it that lock in. So mine broke. I think that's pretty common. So I'm going to have to go a little deeper in this thing, get this apart so that I can replace this. So the next thing we need to do is remove this cover plate now that the steering wheel's off. On mine, this is metal, but I think some of the models later were probably plastic. And there's just three Phillips screws here that we need to take out. So once those are out, this will just slide right off and it'll expose your locking wheel. If my terminology is not correct, I apologize. But basically, this locking plate here allows this pin to lock your steering wheel so that it won't turn. You see, when you turn your key, that pin disappears. That's how that works. So now we're into the tricky part. This plate is under a spring-loaded amount of tension. It's pretty hard to push down, but basically right at the base of this plate is a locking ring on this shaft. So you need to get this plate pressed down and get this locking ring out. I've seen people say that you just push and pick and it'll come right out. They make a special tool that you could spend money on that's going to press this down. You know, you could wrestle with it, have a partner push it in while you pick it out. But let me show you what I came up with. So this here is what I call a fine example of hillbilly ingenuity using junk and scrap that I had laying around. So this replicates kind of the tool that you can buy and basically I just, uh, I'll show you how it works, but I just had some scrap uh, strap metal in uh, my bin, so I made a you know, a pattern there that I could use, and then I had this long carriage bolt that had the right threads for this nut, and then I was lucky enough to have this nut here, which threads onto the, the uh, shaft of the steering wheel. So this, this nut got welded to this one so that these threads match here, and then I'll show you what this nut and washer is for. But basically we're going to use this to push that locking plate down so we can use a pick to get that pin out. Okay, so this little deal here will work on a lot of different cars. And you might be asking why I welded a nut to a nut. Why didn't I just weld the nut to the shaft? Well, so I could interchange this if there's different shaft pattern uh, threads. Thinking ahead, I guess. So this nut right here pretty much just threads onto the shaft. Gets you a few threads on. Just so you got enough of a, a grip and you're not going to strip out anything. Okay, and we'll tighten this nut down here. Starting to see where I'm going. These two legs support that plate. And we'll just take our wrench and tighten it down. So if you watch right in here, you'll see this little ring is going to start to be exposed. Okay, there we go. Now you can see that everything is exposed. And I should be able to monkey with this pin a little bit until I can get it out. OK, 
Okay, now we got the pin rolled up. I think I can just loosen this and everything will slide right off the top of the shaft. There's our pin. And here comes our locking plate. So this, I just had to keep wiggling it until it came off. I didn't want to pry and ruin my column, but I'm also making note, there's the pin for the steering lock. And this is the groove that I'm going to line it back up with when I put it back on. And there is our cancel cam. So as I mentioned, you may have to get this deep into the steering column to replace a few different things. This turn signal switch is one of them. And then you can even keep on going and get into where you're replacing your lock cylinder. My turn signal switch looks pretty good. It looks pretty clean. I may just clean it up and put some more dielectric grease on here while I'm in. But other than that, let's uh, take a look at the two different types of turn signal. Cancel cam and make sure we get the correct one. So here's the piece that I bought to replace the cancel cam. Okay, so comparing the two, these notches are a little further apart, which these notches are to basically cancel your turn signal when you turn. And, you know, the other side is relatively the same. This one has a little more of a dish than this one. And I compared the two stubs here and they're, they're identical as well. So let's take a look at this. Because these types of things fascinate me. Let me show you how this actually works. All right, for demonstration purposes, I did take this heavy spring out of here. And <clears throat> if you put this cancel cam in here, okay, so you make a turn, signal on, you turn your wheel. To make that turn, you get the one click, click it again, and it cancels the turn signal. So that's how that's working. And we'll take a look at this other one. Show you it works the exact same way. So I think this part's going to work just fine. Okay, to get this back together, we're just going to go in reverse order, get our spring on there, put our cam on. Okay, then we've got our locking plate. I made a dark blue mark here so that we know it lines up with our lock pin. So I've got my lock ring here. We're going to go ahead and get that started on the column. So now we'll get this plate tightened back down so we can get our locking ring in. Okay, so we're just going to work this ring back down into its groove. And now we can remove the tool. Holy crap guys, this tool works awesome. I've had to take this horn apart and put it back together like five times. I kept getting a constant hot at my horn harness. And what was happening was that stupid dormant part, when you would push this plate down, it was grounding it out. So you see this ring right here, this copper ring, it actually goes like this and it rides on your constant 12 volt pin that's right here inside. So when this was being pushed down, it was pushing the plate into this lip on the, the new piece and grounding it out. So finally I figured that out and I just put it on the grinder and I ground this edge off to where it's not curled up and over and um, actually recessed it back a little bit from the plastic. So now it's got no way that it's gonna be able to touch this. So works pretty good now, I have no issues. This is the original horn wire. And I'll just show you, you know these horns, it's got a constant 12 volt that is going to this uh, wire right now because of this circular copper, brass, whatever it is, ring is constantly getting 12 volt and then once you put your wires in there with your little pin, that's putting 12 volts to your wire. And then when you push your horn, 
it grounds it out. So that's why an active grounding in there was causing me to just have a headache with a constant honking horn. So stick around for the next video. I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade a regular Esprit base model Firebird steering wheel to this formula type steering wheel. There's quite a few pieces in there that you're going to need to get to put this together. I've got the schematics and the know-how to do this. So check out the next video. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thanks for stopping by Heavy Pedal Garage and catch me next time.